Hello my friends and welcome to The Electric Viking. Hope you've had an awesome day. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Really appreciate your support. In fact, it means a heck of a lot to me and I really didn't expect to be here in this situation after just creating this channel only around about four or five months ago. Now, Steve Hanley reports for Clean Technica. By the way, if you haven't read Steve Hanley's journalism, you should be. Some of the best out there. Jump onto Clean Technica and you can look up his articles. Now, as you know, there's been recent alarm expressed by the German Automobile Association, by BMW, and by unions within Germany that are afraid of the EV revolution. They're afraid that it's going to take away their jobs. They're afraid of being disrupted. Understandably afraid. But let's have a look at just what is happening in Germany. There is a lot of battery factories being built in Germany right now. The German government is heavily subsidizing these factories. Makes a lot of sense to me. They don't want to lose their automotive industry to China or to anywhere else for that matter. So interestingly, German automakers produced 53,221 EVs in July of this year. Now, for comparison's sake, Chinese automakers produced 150,000 EVs in August of this year. So around three times as many EVs. But you can see both the Chinese automotive industry and the German are actually producing quite a few EVs. But let's have a look at where the German auto industry has come from. Now, those 53,221 EVs produced in July work out at 22% of the total number of cars produced in Germany that month. So 22% of all cars produced in Germany in July were fully electric. That's pretty staggering. Now compare that to March 2020, the year before when just 7% of new cars produced were EVs. And in January of 2019, when only 3.2% of new cars were electrics, according to Energy Monitor. That is what an EV revolution looks like. Now, I've had people comment on this channel <laughs> saying, I'm unsubscribing from your channel because you're lying about the EV revolution. It's not doubling every year. Yeah, well, uh, okay, 3% in 2019, 6.8% in 2020. 22% in 2021. You're right, I lied. It's more than doubling. It's nearly tripling. Yeah. And by the way, if you want to subscribe, go ahead. Be my guest friend. Plenty of people want to know the truth, and here it is. Now, these numbers will change dramatically. And I, when I say dramatically, I mean you don't really understand just how dramatically. I haven't made I don't have the time to make enough videos to show you what is really going on. And I'm telling you, what is really going on is I have 27 tabs open right now on my computer with all the different EV battery factories being built in Germany, all the different plans of automakers in Germany. There's a lot going on in Germany. And you know what? There's a bit of panic going on. There's a lot going on. The government is really trying to get approvals happening faster because Approvals in Germany are held up by a bureaucratic nightmare. I mean, it took, what, 20 years to get an airport approved and built. So the German government knows this. They know that if it takes 20 years, they're going to be disrupted. So they're approving battery factories as quickly as they possibly can. You're just not hearing about it because this stuff isn't reported on by all the mainstream EV websites. Now, in addition to that, when Tesla's Gigafactory in Berlin is hitting its full strides probably in about, well, six to 12 months, these numbers are going to be massively different, massively, massively different. Now, overall German car production was actually down 26% last month compared to the same month a year ago, yet EV production was up 9%. And that's according to data supplied by the German Association of the Automotive Industry. Globally, total car sales shrank by 14% in 2020 compared with the previous year. Now, 
EV sales increased from about 2 million units to more than 3 million units in spite of a falling automotive industry. Now, as you know, Volkswagen, Mercedes and BMW are the big three of the German automotive industry and all three have set goals for their electric car initiatives. Now, obviously Volkswagen is by far the biggest of the three. The Volkswagen Group has a huge number of different automotive companies under its umbrella, Audi, Skoda, Seat, Bugatti, Lamborghini, the list goes on and on and on. Skoda. Anyway, Volkswagen expects 50% of its sales in 2030 will be EVs, rising to 100% by 2040. That's way too late. If that happens, Volkswagen is in serious trouble. I believe that those figures will be changed within the next 12 months. I'd be very surprised. Their CEO is a very smart person who I highly respect. And I think he's pushing the company to move towards 100% EVs sooner than that. But coming up against probably potentially shareholder and board member pushback because they're afraid of losing their current sales. But Volkswagen Group, we know as an entire group, are no longer focusing on internal production, internal combustion engine vehicles at all. They're not doing any more engine development. They've completely stopped all of their engine development, which is a good decision. Now, obviously, that's a very vague commitment, and I think those numbers will change. Now, BMW says it expects fully electric vehicles to count for 50% of global deliveries by 2030 and has announced that its mini subsidiary will sell only electric cars beginning that year. Now, I've made a video about what I think will happen to BMW by 2030, and I'll put that in a link in the description. You can have a watch of that video and let me know what you think. Now, let's have a look at the Chinese automotive industry. China's electric car manufacturers required it recorded rising sales figures for electric cars and plug-in hybrids in August. Now, there's some really interesting numbers here. Now, I'm going to tell you the first interesting number, so if you don't want to watch the video anymore, you'll at least know this. BYD surpassed 60,000 new energy, new electric vehicle, NEV sales mark for the first time in its history. By comparison, Tesla sold 44,264 of its vehicles manufactured in China last month. So in total, the two of them sold 100,000 new energy vehicles. Now, BYD only exported 781 passenger vehicles in the month of August. 781 out of a total sales figure of 68,000. In other words, about 1%. Now, BYD just posted on their BYD Europe Facebook and Twitter accounts that they plan to go global now. Now, they are going global now. They obviously have announced they're going to Australia, to New Zealand, to Europe, to the UK. And I just made a video on how they've announced they're now hiring for sales positions for passenger car sales in the United States. They're going global. And only 1% of their sales in the month of August were outside of China. Do you think they could double those sales in a year, realistically, if they're going to sell in all those other countries? I would say that's a very conservative look on their sales in 12 months, considering they're the fourth largest battery company in the world, and they have their own semiconductor manufacturing plant. They don't have the two bottlenecks that everybody else has. That I would say it's very conservative to say they could double their sales figures in electric cars within 12 months. Now, Let's have a look at everything else going on in the Chinese EV market. According to the China Passenger Car Association, the CPCA, the sales volume of locally manufactured NEVs in China climbed to 304,000 vehicles in August, a 23.7% increase from the previous month. Cumulative sales of China-made BEVs and FEVs in the first eight months now stand at 1.643 million vehicles, according to the association. Now, I need to remind you here, Xpeng, NEO, SAIC, Great Wall Motors with Aura, they're just some, Wuling Hongwan, they're just some of the cars and the automotive manufacturers that are pushing outside of China that are about to sell their vehicles 
globally. The Chinese automotive industry is about to blow up. Now, when I say blow up, yes, this could mean in two ways. Well, the first way, in a, in a good way for them, their sales figures are going to massively increase. They're going to disrupt the Japanese automotive industry. They're going to disrupt the American automotive industry. They're going to disrupt the European automotive industry as well. But, of course, there is way too many, way too many businesses in the electric and battery industry and the electric car industry in China. Way too many. There's tens of thousands. And some, many of those are going to go bankrupt. Many of those will be just pushed out by the Chinese government because the Chinese government wants to consolidate companies. They might just encourage them to consolidate or they might get rid of them. I don't know. Who knows? But there'll be big, big changes going on within the next 12 months. That's for sure. BYD sold 61,409 NEV units in August, specifically 60,508 passenger cars and 901 commercial vehicles. This represents an increase of 301% year on year, around 21% month over month. Within the NEV segment, sales of all electric vehicles and plug-in hybrids increased by 223% and 556% respectively compared to the previous year. Part time. Electric vehicles in particular have thus become more popular. Now, like I said, 99% of these sales were in China. Incredible. Incredible the potential this company has, isn't it? Now, in terms of individual models, BYD's flagship Han came in at 9,000 units sold last month, representing cumulative sales of over 110,000 units since its launch. BYD sold 13,000 units of the Quinn Plus DMI, and the entire Quinn family sold 22,350 new vehicles in August. Furthermore, 6,240, 17,700, and 4,782 Tang, Song, and Yen series vehicles were sold last month. Now, I just want to remind you of the fact that BYD's new vehicles are just being launched now. They have a series of six new vehicles coming out over the next six months and around about 10 new EVs coming out over the next 12 months. According to the China Passenger Car Association, BYD sold 99% of these vehicles in China itself, only 780 electric, well, close to 99%, only 781 electric vehicles and plug-in hybrids were exported to foreign markets, it says. This detail is particularly interesting in view of Tesla's export rate. According to CPCA figures, the California electric car maker sold 44,264 BEV vehicles manufactured in China in August, a third more than in the previous month. Tesla exported 31,380 of the cars to Europe, among other locations, while domestic sales amounted to 12,900 vehicles. This was a 50% increase in domestic sales over the previous month. Also based on CPCA statistics are the following sales figures. SAIC GM Wuling sold 44,000 NEV vehicles in August. Now, I'll remind you that the, they're basically the car that they sell that is taking up about 80% of the EV sales is one single model, the GM Wuling Hongwan Mini EV. And this is going to blow this car up big time. It is about to explode. The reason, well, one, they're going to be selling it in Europe. But even more importantly than that fact that it goes on sale in Europe within the next two months is the fact that they just brought out a newer version of this model. It's longer and, and more importantly, more importantly, it has a battery twice the size, has twice the range, and it has a motor that has twice the power. Bigger, twice as powerful, twice the range, and more crazy. It's going to cost basically the same price. Now, this works in China because, the reason this works in China is because it will now qualify for EV subsidies for buyers, not just for manufacturers. It gets an EV subsidy from as a manufacturer. They get $1,000 to make each of these vehicles. Then now, because it will hit certain range figures, it will also be eligible for customer EV subsidies. This means you have to buy one of these for the exact same price. This model will cost five thousand US dollars for a car with three hundred kilometers of range. Yep, I just said that three hundred kilometers of range for five thousand US dollars. Imagine how many they could sell globally if they could sell them even at 
say, 8,000 US dollars. Crazy. Now, SAIC Motor PV sold 17,000 units, including 4,000 overseas. GAC Aon sold a total of 11,600 units. The two Volkswagen joint ventures with SAIC and FAW together sold 11,800 NEV vehicles, new energy vehicles. And let's get to Xpeng. Well, Xpeng gives its own figures for its August sales. According to the report, the company delivered 7,200 vehicles, an increase of 172% compared to August 2020. Year-to-date sales now accumulate to 46,000 vehicles, an increase of 334% to the same period last year. BYD and Xpeng are two of the most important manufacturers in the world, and I'm invested in Tesla and BYD. I'm soon going to invest in Xpeng. They are doing amazing things. I'm going to put a link in the description below to a video I made about Xpeng's new sedan, which is about the price of a Toyota Camry absolutely wipes the floor with it it will kill the camry in every department technology comfort luxury style actual performance and it's an ev it's going to absolutely take the market by storm that is one of the reasons why i'm going to invest in xpeng in addition to that i like its ceo ceo i love what it's doing with autonomy its autonomous system is probably well, it's, it's very, very good. They're getting up to that level where they're, you know, pushing towards Tesla. And I think they're going to come out potentially with full self-driving by maybe 26, 27, 2026, 2027. Anyway, move on. Among the passenger cars delivered in August for Xpeng were 6,165 P7 sedans, 1,049 units of the G3 Compact SUV, and the company plans to start deliveries of its G3 facelift called the G3i this month. In addition, Xpeng's third production car, the P5's family sedan, will be officially launched in a number of markets around the world, and first deliveries are scheduled for October. Now, the P5 sedan is the car that's going to crush the Toyota Camry. In fact, it's going to crush a lot of cars. It is priced incredibly well. And I'm, like I said, seriously impressed by what Xpeng is doing. Neo, on the other hand, not so much. They're doing some good things, just not as good as Xpeng. Another China startup, Neo, published its figures in for August and reported 5,900 EV vehicles delivered, an increase of 48.3% compared to the same month last year, but around about a 30% drop versus their sales in the previous month of this year. Sales were distributed among the manufacturers, three models as follows, 1,740 ES8s, 2,340 ES6s and 1,800 EC6s. So they have those three models on sale during August. Cumulative deliveries since the Trio's market launch now reach 1,400 vehicles. Now, one thing I do like that Neo is doing, they invested in a chip company in China, which makes semiconductor chips and it makes full self-driving hardware as well. Well, it's aiming to do so anyway. So that's a good move from Neo. Now, this is some good news about Neo. They said that order intake reached an all-time high in August. Quote, vehicle production, particularly manufacturing of the ES6 and EC6, was significantly disrupted by supply chain constraints due to the COVID-19 pandemic in certain areas in China and Malaysia, of course, according to Neo. The startup is therefore revising its sales forecast for the third quarter to between 22,500 and 23,500 vehicles. Previously, NEO had reported 23,000 to 25,000 vehicles. So NEO is being affected by semiconductor chip constraints, whereas its competitor, BYD, makes its own, so therefore it's not constrained. Now, these numbers are incredible. Let's put this in context. 300,000, in fact, this number was updated on the 10th of September to 321,000 NEV vehicles sold in China. That's twice as many as the previous year. Let's put this in context. Total vehicle sales in China fell by 18% to 1.8 million units in August due to the semiconductor crisis. Sales fell by 18% of all vehicles, and yet sales of vehicles with a battery in them increased year over year 
by almost exactly double. You can see that the percentage of batteries, you can see that the percentage of vehicles sold with a battery, either FEV plugins or fully electric cars, has massively increased as a percentage of vehicle sales in China. Now, as Steve Hanley said, the EV revolution is starting to build momentum. You can feel it happening. You can see it happening. But don't look now. By the end of this decade, the internal combustion engine may be consigned to the dustbin of history. That's just what humanity needs to battle back against the ravages of an overheating planet. Thanks for watching the video. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.